Hey there, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm so grateful for each of you. My name is Robin and you're listening to the Live Life Balanced podcast. Living life balanced is something that I hope each of you desire. And every time you listen to one of these episodes, I wanna celebrate you for showing up for yourself. I'm a former teacher, now integrative holistic nutrition coach, and a mom to two beautiful girls who originally inspired me to go on this journey. Over the last 20 years, I've learned a lot and I've been growing a lot, and that ultimately has led me to be able to create a healthier, balanced lifestyle for my family. It's definitely been quite a trip, but I'm super excited to see where this is going to take me. I love learning and sharing, of course, but I really love to empower people to go on their own health and wellness journey. Let's be honest, it's really hard to grow if we're not pouring into ourselves, right? Let me ask you, when's the last time that you took time just for yourself? We all need this for our own health. This weekly podcast will be filled with simple, actionable steps to guide you to create a life that you desire. Over the years, I always hear how it feels so overwhelming to live a healthy lifestyle because of all the confusing information out there. And, you know, it can feel like a lot, but it doesn't have to. We can unpack some of that together. How people are just frustrated with their health and that they just don't have the energy to get through the day. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. Together, we're going to explore yummy whole foods, unpack some of that confusion, talk simple shifts and swaps, and learn how to feed ourselves from a holistic lens. I want you to discover what feeds you off of your plate, which is equally, if not more important than what you put in your mouth. We call these primary foods. Topics that we're going to talk about are things like how do you move daily? What's your sleep like? Where do you find joy? What are the thoughts and stories that you tell yourself? and so much more. I want to be a guide for you and walk alongside of you on your wellness journey. I'll be sharing with you, but I'm also going to have other health and wellness experts on so that you guys can hear about a variety of topics from different points of view. And the idea is that you just take what serves you and just leave the rest. My ultimate desire is to build a community filled with beautiful souls like yourself who will support encourage and lift each other up so that we can thrive on our own journeys. I hope you walk away each week with a little nugget of gold that inspires you, makes you feel less overwhelmed and more empowered to try different things that will move you towards a happier, healthy life that you want because you're so worth it. We all are. Until next time, find peace, love, and light by breathing, being present, and allowing for all possibilities to happen. Hey y'all, welcome back to today's episode. We're going to be chatting with Jenny Shafitz. Um, she's a life coach and a breathwork facilitator at Gentle Coaching. She lives in New Hampshire, which um, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in my earlier years there. Um, she lives with her husband, two teenage kids, and two dogs. Uh, we became friends in over podcasting and um, really gotten to know each other and she's uh a really sweet and fun person to be around. She works with clients who desire to feel more calm, confident, aligned, and compassionate towards themselves, which, I mean, what woman couldn't use more of that, right? Um, in addition to coaching, she leads a community of sports loving women on Facebook. It's called the Sister Sidelines Facebook group. So if you are into sports, you want to talk sports, um, she's your person. She just is a sports enthusiast. Um, And she also hosts a podcast called Sideline Sisters, and that features um, interviews showcasing how the impact of sports, uh, what the impact of sports has done um, to people around the world. So I love her podcast. It's great. Um, Whether you're into breath work, whether you're into coaching, whether you're into sports, you know, she's, she's definitely someone to check out. I'll drop all of her stuff in the show notes, but let's meet her. Hey, welcome back to today's episode. I'm here with Jenny. And we've been chatting a little bit, having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're not going to let that stop us. So we're going to get right into it. Um, Jenny, how are you? Great. So happy to be here with you, Robin. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We've all heard a little bit of your intro, but I wanted to just kind of have you tell a little bit of your story and kind of how you have gotten to where you are today. Fantastic. Like a lot of people, it's a long and winding road. I didn't I didn't come out of the womb knowing exactly what I wanted to do and finding my spot in adulthood 
perfectly placed um, with no bumps and and bruises. Um, I had to do a lot of trial and error and try on a lot of different hats and um, play dress up and do a lot of things and you know, have a lot of different experiences and, you know, get hurt along the way uh, to finally figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, We all, we all have, you know, big T, little T trauma, whatever that is we want to define. We all have pain in our, in our past and it's what we decide to do with it. Um, So a hundred percent. I am one of those people who can reflect back on the pandemic with uh, through the lens of silver lining. And I used that time to work with a life coach, which I had never done before. I had never, uh, I'm one of those people. I, um, I grew up with a lot of therapy. Uh, my parents were not afraid of that. Um, so, yeah. So I, um, again, had a lot of trauma in my past. Um, so they weren't afraid of that. So I had experienced a lot of therapy in my, in my history, but I had never done the life coach thing. And then all of a sudden during the pandemic, a life coach ad came across my social media feed. And I was like, Oh, what's this all about? Um, so I entered into a, a, a short-term group program, and that was the start of my latest personal growth journey um, at that stage of my life. And, you know, again, the long and winding road continued, and that program led to another, led to another, until I finally, I did a lot of work on my demons, you know, air quote demons. Um, I did a lot of work, a lot of discovery, a lot of healing. And the outcome, one of the outcomes was me looking in the mirror saying, I, I want to do this. Huh. this, this. That's all. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because everybody starts someplace, right? Everybody starts on their journey most of the time, not knowing what that actually is going to look like. And we have really no control as a young child because, you know, we don't have the brain capacity or the experience or all of that. And so we grow up in this, in a time where we just kind of roll with it because that's just how it goes, you know, until you get a little bit older and you get a little wiser and you start to see how other people do things and how things feel and you try them on, like you said, and you experiment with different things. And, and that's all part of life. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of the growth for each individual person. And number one, you know, the fact that you are authentically telling your story, not holding back, you're, you're saying that you went to therapy as a child, you're saying that, you know, you didn't have it all together necessarily, but who does, right? It's like right. that the quote, stigma that, you know, our society is like, you're supposed to have it all together when you're an adult, you know, it's like, well, no, actually that's not true. And so the more that people speak out about maybe what has happened to them, not, you know, in, in so much detail, but just how stumble and fall and get up and stumble and Mm -hmm. fall and get up. And you have to keep going through that process until you get to the modality that kind of is the eye opener. And so for you, congratulations on taking that leap, having something cross and it felt right and resonated with you that you were able to, to, to dive into that and just kind of see, and was that the end all be all? Absolutely not. That was probably like the very, you know, the toe dip in to see like what life could be like in other ways when you work on yourself. Right. And so Mm. I love how that's led you to more continuous growth. And I know you have a coaching, you know, business. And I think someone like you coaching other people is wonderful because you've got life experience. You're not, you know, you're not somebody who hasn't lived it before. And I think that the respect of that is huge because again, it's not that you know everything, but because you have wisdom and because you've tried on a bunch of different things, you have 
something so big to give to other people who are struggling, who need that assistance or guide or coach or whatever you want to actually call that. Um, I know that you dabble in breath work. And I think that obviously that must have been a modality that you ran up against at some point, you know, where it it helped in some way. And so a lot of people are really unaware of what breath, breath work actually is and that it's actually a tool and a modality that can be used to better your health and wellness. So could you talk a little bit about what you do with breath work and how you kind of came into it and how it's helped not only you, but other people? Sure, sure. And thank you for what you said. I really appreciate that because it, it is funny how I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm 48 years old and I'm, I feel like I'm on act seven, nine, 12, um, you know, and, and it is kind of hilarious because I, I tongue in cheek will say I'm, I'm very highly educated and, sure. And, you know, I had a food truck for a while and it was almost comical because, you know, there was, you know, what, a couple hundred thousand dollars down the toilet that, you know, because I'm making cookies that I did not need any of that education to do. But, you know, thank you, parents, for spending all that money. Um, so, you know, the breath work is is wonderful. It is an incredible modality. And again, I will admit that I came upon it through here, I'll say it, FOMO. Um, Okay, so I was in my life coaching certification and which I I entered into, um, you know, full, full cannonball. Like that was, that was me like full heart. I'm completely um, in this to win it this is a great opportunity. Yes, I had been exposed to breath work at this point. It was a part of my coaching program. So I, I had felt some of the benefits, but was I all in? No, I'll admit that there was an element of FOMO. I, I jumped in because it was there. It was available to me. And I felt like I'll add this to my, my toolbox. This is something I can offer my clients. And Sure, there are benefits to me because it is another modality I can access for myself. And here's the thing. While I'm doing it, just like you know, when you're when you're doing something good for yourself, I mean, if you're going to start eating better just because your friends are doing it or just because your husband decides to eat better, yes, you can be doing it for the other person. But all the while, it's going to benefit you. You can do it for someone else, but as a byproduct, it's going to help you. So yes, I was doing it to add to my uh, credentials, but I wasn't immune to the benefits. Correct. And it's funny because I think a lot of times when we are trying something on for a variety of reasons, we may not be connecting the goodness we're going to be able to get out of it. And I think that happens a lot. You know, we start doing something like, oh, I'm just going to do it, you know, or the FOMO or it's discounted or whatever it is that kind of gets you there. And you really don't even know what you're going to actually walk away. And you walk away with something completely different. And I I can relate to that because when I um, did Kathy Heller's um, Abundant Ever After, I really had didn't even know I signed up for it. And then w- when it was starting that the free boot camp, it was like, oh, you know, jump on or whatever. And I was like, oh, well, I'm sitting here with my mom. I might as well make t- use of my time. Mm-hmm. And it was like, after that first day of being in her presence, I was like, well, this must be a God thing because I didn't even know how I signed up for it. I signed up for it somehow. I'm here. And I at that point, I still didn't even know what I was going to get from it. That course forever changed. Right a lot of my being because of the way she teaches and because of what she says. And to be quite honest, I walked away with a million times more than what I thought I was going in for. You know, it's like, it's, it's just being in the right place at the right time and not knowing the surprise you're going to get, I guess. So with breath work, do you practice a particular type? Are you more partial to one? Either do you use different breath work practices for different types of things? Yes, all of it. So um, I am I am partial to just 
using it to calm down. I mean, that's sure. some people, uh, there are different patterns for different purposes. Right. Um, so if you are, if you, if your default uh, behavior, or, you know, your, your uh, nervous system being is low, your state is normally more of a depressed state, then you would want a pattern to lift you energize you if your state is more um and so that's that's um that's one way if your nervous system is more like high anxiety then you would use a pattern to lower that would you know different breath patterns if you're it's all intention based that's Mm -hmm. breath work um that you would enter a session for if you're just sitting you know if you're ticked off in traffic, you were just cut off or, or your, your just feelings are frustration. You just got off the phone with someone that aggravated you, or you're running through your checklist, your to-do list, and, and you're at a red light. And that's just all you're, you're focused on. You could be sitting at a red light, just taking some deep mindful breaths. That's breath work and people aren't even realizing they're doing it. If you're just taking, you know, three, five, 10 deep breaths and, and doing it with intention, Mm -hmm. that's kind of your entry point to breath work. A session is going to be more involved, more involved. You're, you know, you're going to be led through different patterns. There's going to be, you know, mantras and cueing and visualization involved, um, and perhaps different patterns with flow, um, you know, choreography, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, if you are, I'll do it in the shower, really, is a time where because I'm focused, that's that's time where I'm by myself, right? It's time where I have time. I know I'm alone for what, five, six, seven minutes, maybe more if I, if I'm lucky, I will intentionally, you know, maybe put my hands. I have, um, you know, a couple of walls for my shower. I, you know, can put my hands on the surface, focus my attention on the, the solid surface. I will bring my attention to how the water feels, the, the scent that's coming off the soap or the shampoo. And just really thinking about what's going on in my head. Yeah. And, and allowing the thoughts, not judging, not berating myself, but just being, just well, I think it's, it's such an interesting example because as you were saying that, it's like most people shower every day, right? <laughs> For the most part, once or twice. Um, but how often can you remember what your shower was like? Nobody does because it's like you're just right. running through it as fast as you can to get out to do something next. Now, I am a huge believer of um, habit stacking and like when right, you're oil right. pulling, doing it in the shower because it's, you know, it's something you're already doing. So you're not having to separate it out and spend more time, but Mm -hmm. it is interesting because I do think because of our fast paced life and the nonstop wrap tape in the head, we don't really take easy things to be intentional about. We wait until we're either, you know, sitting on your yoga mat or waiting till you're, you know, so frustrated you're taking what, whatever it is, but it's like, in those mundane times is where we need to start the practice of being intentional and the breath work breath work is free guys. Like it's something that everybody can do. It doesn't cost a dime, but you know, a breath work session is a little bit different because that is something that you're using as a modality or a tool to work through things. And you learn from somebody else who has the experience, but then you take that experience away and then it's free for the rest of your life. So it's really how you look at that. And when I hear people say, I don't know how to do breath work or breathing doesn't work for me or stuff. But, you know, one thing to remember is there's all kinds of different modalities of breath work, breathing. You know, I, I thought it was cool how you just said, um, 
you know, if you're feeling low, there's breath work patterns to bring you up and if, and vice versa. Now I know a lot about if you're up and you need to come down, but could you give me one pattern of, for someone who might be in a lower state of vibration that really needs to kind of raise up during the day? Mm-hmm. What is it fast breathing is what I'm kind of envisioning, but I don't know. I I'm a big fan of, I'm trying to think of how to, so most of the time, in um in breath work, we do want to encourage nose breathing mm-hmm. because that is how we can get a deeper breath is you know that big inhale mm-hmm. you know it it does it's so cleansing, but this pattern is all mouth okay and it is it is invigorating and it can be hard because we're not used to doing this. It's all mouth and you want to focus on the exhale. So the inhale is going to be, it's going to happen passively because you're not focused on it. So you want to focus on blowing out and keep the shoulders down and focus, feel it's all, you're going to almost feel like you're um, doing a little crunch. So if you're sitting in your chair, it's going to feel like a little bit of an ab crunch and you're focusing on blowing out. So you're going to go, so you're not focused on inhaling, mm-hmm. just focus on the exhale. Almost imagine like you're going down uh, like a whole row of candles and blowing them out one at a time. That can be like invigorating. If you were to start your day, if, I mean, if that, not that you need to start your day that way. But if that's, if you're just feeling like, oh, I'm kind of down in the dumps, that can be a lifting. Um, That can be, I I mean, I can kind of imagine because it kind of gets your blow, your blood flowing. It kind of pumps you up a little bit. Whereas if you kind of expand your lungs and kind of bring down. Right. Whereas like, if I'm feeling just kind of like high anxiety, I want Mm -hmm. to take that big inhale, exhale, and bring myself grounded. Like I'm kind of rounding down into my chair. Yeah. But that blow breath, it can be, it can lead to a little bit of lightheadedness. So you don't Mm -hmm. want to do that for a long period. So you might, you know, set a timer for 10, 15 seconds, or you might count that even, you might count how many breaths you do. Cause that's, that's going to be a shock to the system. If you're not used to it. I'll include that in a song. And I might, for a more experienced breather, I might do that for the chorus. So that my in choreography might be, you know, the the 30 second chorus of a song, then we'll go back into, you know, an inhale to exhale. And then we'll do that low breath for the the chorus. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So I, I like that, how you can incorporate that into listening to something. I never yeah. thought of that. I like that. Yeah. So I wouldn't do that blow for four or five minutes straight. That sure, would be, sure. that would be intense. <laughs> that would be too much. Got it. But you know, I would, I would be able to do that for 30 seconds. Sure. But if you're just starting out, if you're listening and you've never done that before and you want to try it out, yeah. you know, 10 seconds, seconds right, to get started. So um, how do you incorporate I know you do life coaching and you, the breath work kind of comes to together, but then you have this whole other like sideline sister. I know you're like a huge sports fanatic. Uh, you know, that's definitely what I know about you. Yes. So do you merge those two things together? Do you work with parents of children that are like athletes? Yeah. Um. So the sideline sisters podcast and Facebook group, that is a place for fun that's a place for the the podcast I'm interviewing people who in all realms of sports and some of that is heavy or you know deeper into aspects of sports that could be mental health related um the Facebook group is a place for anyone who loves sports anyone you know sports moms anyone with an interest in sports The way that this merges or marries with my coaching business is there are so many people who are involved in sports, either as parents, athletes, fans, 
who get worked up. You know, from a fan perspective, you could be, you could be all in and it, it could ruin your day. For sure. It could, yeah. I mean, especially if, if you're betting on it, you could be very involved and it could um, definitely impact your world. Um, as a mom, certainly it's Im- impacting your family. Any any parent of an athlete knows that it's serious business. Moms should not be setting aside these feelings, thinking my child is an athlete, they need the training, they need the nutrition, they need the uh, the camps and the gear. So I'm going to put all my energy there and I'll just suffer through it and I'll drive them around and, and make them the meals and and get them the equipment and I'll um and watch and I'll watch my marriage crumble and I'll I'll suffer through it and sit in the car and work on my laptop and wait until they graduate and um and then I'll figure things out. So I love how you're talking about that because I I see that so often. Um and I think a lot of it is a, a social norm that has been created that is really not healthy. Um and as parents, you know, we also feel the pressure from the sports head person or whoever is in on the league or whoever, you know, is my kids were not in sports, but my daughter was in dance and it was Mm -hmm. serious business. You know, she, we never pushed her. We were definitely not the family that was like, you must excel. You must do this because I had seen before her experiences of that with not just dance, but in, in other things where it's just not healthy. And so, you know, I get being competitive to a certain degree, but the amount of stress that are put on these kids for every little thing that they do, sometimes you just want to go have fun. Mm. Sometimes you just want to go, you know, and so my thing to my daughter was always like, just leave it up, just have fun, go out, leave it on the dance floor. If you have a gift of, of dance and you have a gift of talent, it will just shine through on its own. You don't have to freak out and, you know, do all these things that these other kids are doing unless you really want to like, you know, I mean, if it's a passion of yours, if you really feel like it's benefiting you, then we'll obviously support you. But when you do have a natural talent, you are seeked out and you are quickly brought up the chain, you know, and then it's, then it becomes real pressure and there's gotta be a better balance. I feel like, and parents get caught up in it because somebody's telling them that if their kid's going to make it, they got to do all these things, you know? And it's just like, what happened to the rec league, right? Like right. what happened to just playing in high school and not being on a club, club team? team. Or, yeah. yeah. It's like, so, and again, every child's different and everybody's abilities are different and everybody's wants and desires. And it's like, you just have to talk to your kids and let it be their choice. But that doesn't mean as a parent, you should neglect yourself. And I find a lot of times, uh, especially where I'm at now in life, when you are a parent of an athlete, when you are a parent of somebody and you have poured, you know, the last seven years of your life and really forgotten about you when they go off to college, whether they're playing a sport or not. Yeah. And it's like, all of a sudden you're just dropped flat on your face. Pretty much. If that's what it fe- fe- feels like. And <clears throat> I experienced this earlier on because my daughter chose to stop dancing after a certain grade. And so that for me, that screeching halt came sooner than the empty nest phase. But I feel like a lot of moms come into that. What am I going to do with myself now? Because I don't know how to care for myself because I haven't done it in so long. And so that I love those pocket of people because I feel like as moms and women, we should be supporting each other. And you're right. A life coach, if, if that is the area in which you want to work on, I do integrative health, which is a little bit of a lot of things. It's more foundational. So it's really just deciding for yourself what makes the most sense for where you're at in life, giving yourself some space. And if, if you walk away from this podcast, getting nothing else, this episode, if you have a child in sports, please do something a few times a week for yourself where you block out all other things and just focus on yourself, whether it's self-care, whether it's movement, whether it's talking to a life coach, whether it's figuring out breath work, do something for yourself now before you get to that phase of life where 
you feel more lost. Um, start wherever you are, basically. So right. I love that. And I love how you focus. I love how you are a, a lover of sports. And I am not all sports, but I am a college. I love Florida State. And what happened over the weekend was a bunch of baloney. Moms, if you have athletic children, life is not fair. And so right. you've got to explain that to them earlier on. But then also, it's not fair as far as, you know, you neglecting yourselves either. So it's like, you've got to, you've got to create balance. Yeah. So, and when there's that kind of stress in the household yeah. after a game like that, sure. what tools, what tools is everyone using to manage that kind of pressure that's coming? Yeah. Into the, that's sports. actually, I mean, that's such a good point too, because there are a lot of households that probably would do better if they had some type of tools you're right after a letdown or even after a victory it's like there are tools to use to make sure that you don't have an up or a down you still kind of stay you know even keeled yeah because the expectations are huge they are Um, I wish they weren't though I wish that it was a little bit different and I hope in the next decade or so things start to kind of shift and shake out a little bit because um, I feel like the fun is lost sometimes when there's so much pressure like that. Um, and the children are not like the, the naturally athletic children are amazing, but if they're not having fun and are all it is is stress, I just think it ruins it for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I, I often, I often find myself telling people, let's remember the word that used to come before the word sports. It used to be play. Yeah. What do we do with sports? We play sports. Yeah. And that's that's lost on so many student athletes. They're yeah. not playing anymore. They're working sports. Mm, interesting. I never thought of it that way. But yeah, that's very true. Yeah, they're out there doing a job before, you know, the the... Patriots, their their motto is do your job. Okay, th- yes, it, for them it is their job. Right, because they are getting paid. Yeah, but student athletes, it's not their job yet. They should be playing. And when they start feeling that enormous pressure at such a young age, that's why a fellow podcast uh, classmate of ours, mm-hmm. Kirsten Jones, who has, I love that. Yeah. I like her podcast. Yeah. Who has her other podcast and wrote a book. She taught me that the burnout age among student athletes, the average age is 12. It is horrifying. I have definitely seen that number shift up and tick up, but I, I think that again, having the right tools in place and having parents have those tools is really key. If you're someone listening to this podcast episode and you're a parent of an athlete, you know, just ask yourself, like, what tools do I have to help my children manage what is happening, you know, within their sports dynamic? Um, And having that conversation and hearing your children, listening to your children, I think is big too. Um, And allowing your children to have the journey and you're just sort of along for the ride rather than you um, navigating the journey for them. And we know as parents that we are our kids' biggest influence. Sure. So if our kids truly love the sport and want to continue playing their game, their chosen, mm-hmm. their their chosen avenue, then it's up to us to manage our emotions. And so if we're not the best at it and we need to be the one booking the trips, booking the travel, driving the carpools, going to practice, packing those snacks, buying the gear, you know, doing all of the stuff that we need to do as their tour guide, travel, you know, travel agent, parent, chaperone, nutritionist, all the things that that we need to do as their as their mom, then we best get our mental health under control a la breath work and life coaching and all the things that I would suggest with me, then we model for them how to manage our 
emotions, our pressure, our nervous system, Mm -hmm. so that when they come home from a bad loss, or they're coming back from an injury, or they're coming back from the coach didn't play me, the coach benched me, all the all the team dynamic baloney, they got an argument with the captain or all that stuff. Mm -hmm. They have the tools to handle it. Because yeah. you, the mom, are wow. sharing it with them. Mm-hmm. And and one other thing, like when you were talking about like the chaperone, the, the driver, the agent, the, all the things, it's one of the things um, I didn't do earlier on when she was super little, but as she got more in the middle school years is allowed her to also navigate some of that. So it's like, we would sit down and write, you know, if we were traveling, what are the meals or the snacks that we're going to be eating? Or how do we book a flight? Because it's important. I mean, there's going to come a time where they're not, you're not going to be doing it for them. So, so, you know, we would, I wouldn't say make it fun, but you know, we would just, you know, let's look at, this is why we're going to do this. And this is why we're staying here. And then it got to a point where, you know, at these dance conventions, there's always Starbucks, of course, but it was just like, do you know how much money we spend in a weekend when we go do something like this? And it wasn't to make them her feel bad. And it wasn't, it was really just to show her like we are, can do all of these things, but you're going to get $50 and that $50 can be for X, Y, and Z, including merchandise. So you have to decide how you want to spend that. And I did that because she needed to understand the value of a dollar, first of all. Um, And also, if she started going on her own, she would need to know how to manage her money at a younger age. And so that was, that was exciting and interesting all at the same time. And it was definitely a learning curve, but I think she's better with her money now at 17 because of that. Um, Her her sister just, you know, she burns through her money like a dollar. Where can I spend that dollar? (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, financial planner, that's usually another one I add to the list of Yes. Of jobs that yes mom, yeah that sports mom it's has. life really it's life it's it's yeah. life in sports but it's also life after sports because these are all things that you have to know how to do in different ways when you become an adult or adultish or even in college so um but I do I think the one thing that everybody should basically walk away from this conversation with whether you have an athlete or you don't if you have children what you model, what you take on yourself is the model for your children to see. And so if you do these things for yourself, then as your children grow, they are not only going to get the tools from you, but they're also going to know to work on themselves. And I think that's the most important thing because as a parent, I always tell my children, I do not have all the answers. There are people that are experts in lots of different things. And so my job is to teach you how to find those people because- I don't know where they all are either, you know, but it's like, how do we find them? We need to look. And so, and you get referrals or references and you, you have a conversation with the person that you might hire to do something for you to make sure that it resonates with both of both of you, because you don't just go to somebody because somebody told you to go there. You know, it's like you, we, we often, um, again, I think a societal thing is you just hire somebody and then you expect that they know what you want them to do. And there's a lot of, so I'm trying very hard to teach my children to have those kind of discovery calls or whatever you want to call them, interviewing process, you know, so that you make sure you pick the person that's most aligned um, with the tools that you're searching for. I love this conversation because not only is it, do we talk about life coaching and breath work, but of course the sports thing is huge. Um, a sports lover, a sports player. Um, and also I, I think arts are sports because whether you're in band or dance or, you know, something, it still has the same mold of pressure and rising yeah. to the top and where you're going to go with it and what are you going to do with it and all the things. So yeah, committing um, to something. Yeah. Committing. I like that. So, and what does that commitment come with? I think that's a good conversation too. So uh, thank you for sharing your vision and what you've learned through your journey. Cause like you said, you know, all of the ups and the downs in your journey has brought you where you are today. And now you are more equipped to work with parents 
and adults, you know, and people who need that life coaching style um, that maybe have never had it in their in their life just yet. So um, thank you again for coming on and explaining all of that. So through your life, you've shifted and you've grown and you've created different modalities, non-negotiables. Uh, I call them 1% shifts that create into your non-negotiables to have the healthiest, most balanced, most vibrant life. So what are a couple of things that Jenny, you do every day um, to keep yourself, you know, well-balanced? Boy. Okay. And this, um, this took a long time for me to, to learn how to do. I don't diet. I, I listen to what my body. I mean, that's not like raiding the convenience store, but um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a non, non-negotiable for me is if I want something, I eat it. And you don't feel guilty and you don't pass judgment. All Correct. Time. Correct. Yes. Sleep mm-hmm. is a non-negotiable. I do not. Um, yeah. I mean, my kids are old enough that I don't, I'm not one of those people that waits up if my kids aren't home. I'm not, I'm not that person. I will send a text okay. if, yeah, I will send a text if my, if my child is at a friend's house and say, I hope you're coming home soon. I'm going to bed. I drive okay. safely. Uh, but sleep is really important to me. So I make sure I get enough of it. I get outside when I, want to, but I don't, uh, yeah, guilt. Um, that's probably a non-negotiable is I don't feel guilty. I don't that's make great. myself. And that is, yeah. that is not a learned behavior. That is something that you really have to work on mm. is to get rid of the guilt that comes along with having your own intuition speak loud enough to have you yes. do certain things. And I think that only comes with age and wisdom. Yes, that that was that was a huge part of my um, life coach journey. Work. Yeah, the the deep dive that I did that started during during the pandemic is breaking those patterns, the conditioning, the programming, whichever word we want to attach to it. Sure. I yeah, I broke, I broke all of that, and that's probably the biggest you know, not, not the like little behaviors, the those day-to-day behaviors, but the biggest thing is I probably do not feel guilty for the choices that I make on a day-to-day basis. So if I, if I am sitting in front of the TV, when my husband comes home from work, I don't feel guilty about that. If I didn't make dinner, I don't feel guilty about that. I don't feel guilty. That's good. I mean, I I think that, again, I think that's a hard one to um, reframe sometimes for some people, but when you actually do, it just relieves a lot of stress. It really just lifts a huge weight because we feel like the reframing comes in because we feel like we're going to be letting someone down if we're not doing what we've been conditioned to think that we should be doing. And so when we're not doing that, we feel a sense of someone's going to be unhappy, judge us, whatever those negative things yeah. are. And so the guilt comes in, like, if I don't do this, this is what it's going to feel like. But in actuality, that is not always truth. And if it is, it's just talking with that person and communicating, you know, hey, I had a rough day. I just want to give you a heads up. Dinner yeah. won't be done because it's yeah, just yeah. not in my power at this moment. You know, it's like, it's not just like you're sitting on the couch eating bonbons. Oh, sure, talking. sure, right, right. I always stipulate that. I mean, I'll help. I'll help you fix something. Um, it's not like I've left the house devoid of food. But yes, no, yeah. I hear you. And I think it's. I think again, when you speak up and you talk to your family and you let them know, like this is the kind of day that I had, and I'm just literally spent. Yeah then they're able to see where you're actually coming from. And it's like, it's not, it's not because I don't love you. It's not because I don't respect you. It's not because of all of those things. I am just where I am at. And so I need the space and the understanding to allow me to have that space. And then I'll be fine, you know, the next day or whatever, you know, it's like, yeah. so that's huge. So if you're somebody yeah. who str- struggles with, you know, the guilty mind or needs reframing, that's kind of what, um, life coaching, you know, that is what's in store in that program. It is about reframing and kind of 
getting your life to a point where you are satisfied, you are happy and you are thriving. Um, and you've busted out some of the, the old patterns of thinking and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's way more than a 1% shift to go, to get rid of guilt and, and to, and, and that's tied to getting rid of guilt is tied completely to worthiness for me yeah. is I've, and I've I, realized I'm, I'm, worthy of not feeling guilty and sure. I deserve to sit on the couch some days and not make dinner and I get to watch TV and and maybe I maybe I do get to have a bonbon I don't know maybe and again I do think I think guilt for people is tied to different emotions and different things and it's about you know and you're right not, none of none of the changes none of the non-negotiables None of that comes from a 1% shift. It comes from these small 1% that over time mount up, but you have to start somewhere. And to start with less overwhelm, that's the whole idea of the 1% shift is that oh, maybe right. you're not um, saying I'm not making dinner tonight, but maybe you're saying, you know, I need help with dinner tonight because I'm just, yeah. I'm not, I'm overwhelmed or whatever. So, and, and, you and if you got, and if you got a good night's sleep, it'll true. be easier to speak up for yourself. That's true. I think uh, finding your voice is a huge one for a lot of people. Um, so anyways, this was a lovely conversation. I love all the different things we got to talk about. Um, and if you are looking for someone, I will drop everything in the show notes for um, where you can find Jenny and the Sideline Sisters. You can listen to her podcast and her on social media and all the things. So just look in the show notes. And um, until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And thanks again, Jenny, for coming on. Thanks, Robin. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. Here are three takeaways that I wanted to mention. <clears throat> Number one, prioritize self-care and intentional practices like breath work to balance your responsibilities and enhance your well-being. Number two, em embrace new opportunities even um, when it seems uncertain as they can lead to unexpected personal growth and benefits. And lastly, moms um, should take care of themselves throughout their journey to ensure they maintain a strong sense of identity when their kids fly the nest. If you are someone who is walking into this phase of life and you're needing extra support, you know, please uh, look in the show notes for information on Jenny. Join my raw, uh, raw and real empty nest mama's group um, where you can find support and give support to others um, who are walking either before you or behind you. Um, I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in today. I loved being here with you. I hope that you got something from today's episode. I'd love to hear what resonated with you. Drop a comment below, and if you feel led to, download the episode and share it with someone you love that needs to hear this message. As we continue to spread the goodness of this podcast, I'd love for you to help us by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or and or a rate on Spotify. As we increase listeners, we will come up more often when women are searching for podcasts to listen to. To stay connected with me, you can check out my social media pages at Live Life Balanced with Robin. You can check out my website at livelifebalancedwithrobin.com. You can book a discovery call. And if you're looking for a way to get started right now, you can opt in for my new quick guide for the Empty Nester Refresh. And as always, thank you for letting me be part of your day. It truly means a lot that you're allowing me to be on your wellness journey with you. Until next time, find peace, love, and light by breathing being present and allowing for all possibilities to happen.